All right there, John Anthony. Three questions on a Friday morning. What do you got for me, my man? My seller hold, KC360, is beginning to show signs of success in fighting Kansas City crime. Oh, that's good. And I am thankful that we can actually buy, 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 buy this one. I'm fired up about that, by the way. So we had the police chief, Stacey Graves, on this week because there was a big announcement about how they had uh, reduced crime by 78 percent in the santa fe neighborhood here in kansas city missouri it's one of the most violent neighborhoods over the last two decades and uh credit to the police chief uh, and credit to the uh, police department for doing a good job focusing on that neighborhood and yes we know that there are issues with the county prosecutor we understand that but still it goes to say something when police it's amazing police presence actually works whoa that is why. Can you believe that? Yeah. Having foot traffic of law enforcement in violent neighborhoods actually makes a difference. Jeez, who would have guessed that after the narratives over the last three years or so? I thought we had to have less police because people would feel more safe. And if only we had community organizers walking the streets Oh, man, you should see the utopia we create in this community and across the country. Are we ever going to have that, like, full-blown conversation, by the way, about how everybody who pushed that propaganda in 2020 was wrong? Like, colossally wrong? And there were a few of us who were like, no, we kind of need cops, like, all over the country, especially here in Kansas City. Like, police are good. They're inherently good people. Um, They're worth supporting. Now, yes, there's 750,000 of them in the country. And, of course, they're human beings. So there are some bad ones. And there are some ones who are going to make major mistakes. But police officers as a whole are good people serving their community, worth respecting, worth supporting. That, That common sense narrative that was never political, it was just common sense, completely went out the window and a lot of people bought it and a lot of people who bought it are now trying to act like oh, i i whoa yeah who would say such a thing the receipts are out there just know that the receipts are out there what's next john by seller hold the media will begin to properly cover israel's acts of self-defense oh gosh of course not sell 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 um I mean, where do you want to start? Do you want to start locally with the Kansas City Star editorial page that wrote here in their editorial yesterday, headline, we denounce violence in the Israel-Hamas war, but we have to find a way to coexist? Uh, Listen, to. by the way, I'm going to send my conversation from earlier this hour with Bill O'Reilly to the Kansas City Star editorial board because apparently they need to hear it. Uh, They they don't know history from the back of their you-know-what. First off, the headline is... um, not even accurate. We denounce violence in the Israel-Hamas war. This is not some two-sided war where you pick a side. You had a terrorist-run organization kill over a 1,000 innocent people. No military folks, did nothing wrong, women and children. This is not like a, a two-sided war where you pick a side here, right? But the Kansas City Star can't even get itself to say that. They write here in part, when war breaks out, we choose sides. It's the human thing to do. We claim an injured party and give our support through statements, donations, thoughts, and prayers. Sometimes those sides involve people far away, thousands of miles from us. But sometimes those sides are our neighbors, those who identify with the people fighting in the war. They go on to say, a war broke out on Saturday where Hamas, a pro Palestine organization attacked Israel. Wow, that's quite a, uh, that's a nice way to frame Hamas. A pro-Palestine organization. How about a bunch of savage terrorists who literally, I don't want to say it on air, but you know what they did. I don't need to say it again. You, you, You know how bad this attack was. I don't need to repeat it just to be outrageous, but you get the point. And that's what the Kansas City Star calls them. Meantime, you know, uh, can I mention, too, just the New York Times on a national level and why I'm selling this here real quick? 
All right, here's the New York Times, a push notification they sent out yesterday. In Gaza, residents have no water or electricity as Israel's strikes have pushed the health system to the brink of collapse. Well, guess what? That's what you get when Hamas kills over 1,000 Israelis in a completely unprovoked attack and then also uses hospitals, schools, and mosques as their headquarters and weapons facilities. That's what they do. They do that for a reason because they want to win the propaganda war. And they know they have a sympathetic media in many parts of town. So the New York Times, like the Kansas City Star, is trying in many ways to just confuse you when it comes to moral clarity. And there's no reason to be confused on moral clarity here. There is absolutely none, John. <laughs> Excuse me. Buy, sell, or hold then. Olathe teacher fired for farting on TikTok in front of students. Oh, gosh. Bye, bye, <laughs> bye. This guy is the goober of all goobers. His name is Stephen Taylor. He got fired last month from Olathe's Mill Creek campus because he was making TikTok videos where he was crop dusting students. That's right. And then, he, and then he's crying that he's the, oh, I'm such a victim. Oh, I lost my job. If only you guys paid me more than $45,000 a year. That was part of his lame excuse. Stephen Taylor has been a stand-up comedian for eight years and teacher for six, most recently at Olathe's Mill Creek Campus Alternative School. And he also makes TikTok videos. The reason that I'm doing comedy on TikTok is to make money because you only pay me $45,000 a year. Stop, stop. And I work all the time. Oh, and listen, teachers work hard. I'm not knocking teachers working hard. They work very hard. We need great teachers. I totally agree with that. But this guy's an embarrassment to teachers. Oh, I make TikToks because you don't pay me enough money. No, you make TikToks because you want to make TikToks and you want to be a stand-up comedian. And you're promoting your stand-up comedy tour that you're now going on where you got 30 gigs. You know, probably in like different basements around town, by the way. Free shows. Like, I, this guy is not a sympathetic figure. He was making TikTok videos of how he was lying to kids in the classroom. He was like, yeah, I would tell them that Abe Lincoln created the Lincoln car. Har, 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 har. Like, that's not funny, man, first off. I don't know what, who's watching these TikToks. I don't have a TikTok, so I don't know. But I don't know who's watching the TikToks. I don't know who's finding this stuff funny. And I certainly know, like, lying to kids and then making jokes about it, that's probably not something you want to be bragging about. He did tell the Kansas City Star that his crop dusting of students was only a joke and he didn't actually do it. But I need the students to confirm or deny that. Because how do you prove it, right? He can just say, no, I didn't actually fart in front of the kids. Well, okay, maybe not. But then you're just a fraud on your TikTok. So you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't, my man. Sorry, not sorry. We walked by Mr. Taylor's desk. It smelled so bad. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Hey, you know what? If my kid was in Mr. Taylor's class, if we want to call him that, I don't think he's worth the Mr. thing. But if we want to call him that, uh, and she's like, yeah, the guy's desk always stinks. Or every time he walks by, he's stinking up the joint. Then we know he was totally full of it.